Good evening, my dear colleagues. Welcome to another Inget Zoom Serious Talk. Today, our guest is Dr. Sedan Eral Demir Tuya. Sedan Hocam is a teacher educator at Cha University, Mersin. She's a senior lecturer at the English Translation and Interpreting Department. She has co-hosted and led Electronic Village Online, EVO, mentoring teacher resource sessions since 2020. Of course, she has taught BA, MA, and PhD courses. She has several published articles, materials. Uh, her interest areas are psychological perspectives of ELT, social emotional learning, teacher research, research mentoring, and continuous professional development. My favorite area. The title of her talk this evening is The Power of Reflective Practice, a game-changing tool for EFL teachers. Thank you, dear Sedan Ocham, for being with us, for accepting to be a guest speaker uh, with our community. And welcome again. The screen is all yours. Oh, thank you so much, Aydan Hocam, for this kind uh, introduction. It's my honor. Uh, it's my joy. Uh, uh, I am more than happy uh, um, to be here with you within this uh, very uh, warm community, uh, this community of practice, actually. And uh, thank you very much for uh, giving this opportunity to me to share uh my expertise, I would say, but I, I'm a kind of practitioner, uh, minded academic. Uh, so I hope uh, I will be <laughs> able uh, uh, to um, somehow engage you, some of you maybe uh, teacher educators, but we are all learners. I mean, this is my philosophy. I hope you're going to enjoy being here. And thank you very much for that. So um, this is our um, title, The Power of Reflective Practice, a game-changing tool for EFL teachers. Uh, why do you think um, I, I consider reflective practice as a game-changing tool for EFL teachers? Any ideas? Well, well, well how do you feel uh, like is teaching a language a game? Any, if you can share from the chat to make self criticism, any other ideas? To observe? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm monitor our own um, practices, okay? To be aware of what's going on in class, okay? All right, um, well, if you do um, what you have always done, you will get what you have always got, uh, an unknown saying goes. So as teachers, um, um, you, we we sometimes uh, feel in some r routines and just like I, I say to myself, I, fa I feel bored, like <laughs> it's a boring lesson. I need to do something to, to, to change it uh, somehow the dynamics or whatever is happening here. Uh, I need to uh, tweak this energy into a more enjoyable one. Um, so uh, then I was thinking about what to include uh, some something more enjoyable. I, I just came across a video. I want to share that video. Uh, like, I want you to think as well. Uh, we have a two minute video here. And I think that video makes um, what I intend to um, um, make you feel like uh, with this video. Hold on. Hmm. The year is 1960. Hold on, can, can you hear the sound? Okay, perfect. 
We're at the Olympic Games in Mexico City. Dick Fosbury has just made a record-breaking high jump, winning the gold medal and completely changing how future athletes approach the high jump. But let's rewind and see how critical thinking played a part in getting Fosbury here. For years, high jumpers used a variety of techniques, all of which allowed for the jumper to land on their feet after clearing the bar. Athletes assumed that these were the most optimal methods. But in high school, Fosbury tried them and found himself getting below average results. So he asked himself, hmm, how else could I jump over this bar? Instead of accepting the norm, he began experimenting and came up with a new and different jumping method. He would jump and rotate in the air so that he went over the bar head first on his back. At the time, he was laughed at and criticized for this new method. It looked pretty silly and was so different from the typical methods. But it worked due to some unexpected benefits. It lowered Fosbury's center of gravity, actually placing it below the bar even though he himself was jumping over it. This allowed him to use less energy while increasing his height. And by leaping backwards, he was reducing his chances of knocking the bar off with his arms and legs. Using this technique, Fosbury was jumping higher than anyone else on his high school track team. He continued to hone this method in college and moved on to qualify for the Olympics. And so here we are, back in 1968, with Fosbury winning the Olympic gold medal. He took a problem, not being able to jump particularly high, and used critical thinking to come up with a solution, a new way of jumping that greatly improved his results. To this day, almost every high jumper uses this method, now known as the Fosbury flop. And so it just goes to show how critical thinking can both raise the bar and change the game. So this is the story um, behind uh, my understand of, uh, understanding of changing the uh, game. Sometimes we feel the need um, to improve our uh, performance to, and uh, get some more effective outcomes on part of our uh, students. So I, I asked, uh, is it time, maybe uh, you feel it's time um, to change uh, your game for some of you. Uh, uh, you might uh, need uh, some different ideas, maybe. Uh, you uh, maybe you are feeling stuck um, in the um, middle of your rituals, just following the same routines all the time, uh, without anything creative or anything um, satisfactory. Let's say so. You got the teacher. Uh, you got the power as a teacher. You are the teacher, so you can change the game. How? Oh, um, well, to me, is uh, the answer is reflective practice. It's it's a concept closely linked to learning in professional environments, and uh, not only in teaching, but in um, social work areas like nursing. Um, I mean, people who serve uh, to to other people. Uh, so this kind of um, practice serves uh, as a valuable learning um, aid and. It helps the individuals to combine, articulate, interpret, understand, and derive somehow significance from their uh, experiences. Uh, actually, uh, the history of reflective uh, thinking is uh, old, but the, the educational understanding uh, of the term was brought uh, by uh, Douay and Sean. Uh, for example, in 1910, um, the way wrote uh, reflective practice refers to active, the active, persistent, and careful consideration of any belief or supposed form of knowledge in the light of the grounds that support it. And this means uh, we, we need to have a questioning approach and um, we need to consider why things are as they are and how they might be. Uh, it's a very important uh, point, as I consider as uh, teachers. The way also um, said uh, that being reflective enables us to de direct our actions with foresight. We gain foresight. 
and it enables us to know what we are uh, about when we act. Uh, Shun presents a slightly different view. He regards reflection as having two aspects. One is uh, reflection in action, and the other one is reflection on action. Reflection in action refers to quick thinking, reaction that occur when you are doing. For example, in, in the classroom, you may be teaching a topic which you can see the students are not understanding. So you might, uh, I mean, you need to respond immediately uh, to the situation uh, and find out uh, something to, to change uh, what is happening in the way you see. You might um, reframe, you know, um, how you're telling the topic, or you can come up with a different strategy to, to make things uh, work more effectively. And your reflection in action allows you to see this, consider why it is happening, and respond it by doing differently. Uh, reflection on action is what occurs outside the classroom, uh, because for this you need to consider the uh, situation again, and you may think more deeply about why the students didn't understand and what caused the situation, what options were open to you, and why you chose one option and not another. Again, um, I mean, not again, <laughs> this time, uh, your responses will depend on your existing uh, uh, level of knowledge and experience, uh, your understanding of the theories and your uh, values as the reflection on action is uh, done outside the classroom. Um, it requires uh, uh, more thinking and you have more uh, space um, while doing it. Uh, however, reflection in action is more immediate. And um, so Zeidner and Liston argue that providing ways for teachers to explain their uh, um, spontaneous actions after the event helps teachers make informed, better decisions in the uh, future and uh, Sean describes this appreciation ability as building a repertoire. So uh, when um, teachers have the uh, opportunity or the, the ability to reflect, uh, they continually uh, compare new experiences uh, with previous teaching experiences and um, you know, find uh, some examples, ideas, and um, you know, um, change somehow, increase the range and influence of their actions and keep up, keep on building a, a repertoire. So reflective practice can make the difference between the expert teacher who actively seeks to become a better teacher and the teacher who is merely more experienced than the novice teacher. Here, I want to highlight the point that um, not all the experienced teachers are expert teachers. Uh, so we need to reflect on our practice and keep open to learning and um, in, keep on building our repertoire. And what else? Um, so bridges to reflection, um, how to promote reflection. Uh, uh, reflection, um, um, I mean, Comfortable reflection, that kind of mindset requires non just judgmental support um, by a mentor, for example, by a manager. Like, if you feel like you're going to be judged, uh, then um, you don't feel like uh, expressing yourself. Um, you, you prefer to keep it uh, to yourself. You feel uh, threatened somehow. Uh, that's why feeling safe enough um, and um, you know, expedient learning and kind of do what we expect will get through us. I mean, that might make us feel uh, more comfortable in uh, uh, reflecting our, on our thoughts. 
a role model, a mentor, again, who reflects on their practice, um, knowledge as many methods as possible, many opportunities uh, for engaging in reflection. I will share uh, some ways of um, uh, uh, reflecting, reflection um, in the uh, in continuous part of the presentation that whole time and energy uh, as you know hocalarım it's 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 not that easy to find time you know uh, we are all busy there is workload uh, but if if we get the habit of um, reflecting um, on our teaching experiences uh, our uh, insights can get deeper and we we uh, feel uh, more satisfied uh, with uh, our teaching. And uh, back again to the way uh, reflective teaching involves being constantly alert to the circumstances of teaching and the implications of issues arising during teaching. The way argues um, these principles, I mean, these qualities are very dear to me. That's why I wanted to share uh, again um, his uh, source of my, uh, I mean, one of the prior sources of uh, uh, my inspiration in teaching. Uh, the way identifies three essential teaching qualities. Um, teachers should listen to all points uh, of view. This gets us to open-mindedness. And it is true for, uh, I think, all kinds of communication we have around us, like um, uh, if we uh, keep open uh, to uh, different points of view, uh, we, we don't have a limited perspective and we can see the whole picture. And to be alert uh, to the consequences of their actions, that's, uh, that is responsibility. If, if we feel responsible to the consequences of actions, uh, that makes us um, uh, become autonomous individual, um, autonomous teachers um, and, uh, you know, taking uh, the responsibility uh, to improve ourselves, to develop ourselves uh, uh, professionally, aim for our professional growth as well, and take the um, responsibility uh, of uh, both the teaching and the learning that takes place in our classrooms. And um, to have these uh, qualities, the open-minded, open-mindedness, and responsibility uh, is the uh, core uh, that he calls as wholeheartedness. So teachers who who are open-minded and responsible uh, are uh, wholehearted as well, uh, because um, they can. Um, um, do this, um, live this in, in their uh, teaching with their students and for their students. And teaching students rather than lessons, something worth doing. This is later added by uh, the way, uh, and he, he calls this uh, directness or directness. Uh, is uh, We need to consider the individual differences of our students, uh, the teaching context, um, and uh, instead of um, just teaching something uh, uh, for the sake of teaching it, we need to ensure that our learners are with us and uh, they are learning effectively. Um, actually, uh, I need to talk about um, a bit about globalizing perspectives by Kumara Vadivalu uh, and the post method and. Uh, post-transmission uh, perspective, just very simply, um, um, you know, the transmission um, uh, um, perspective just um, considers teachers as uh, circuits, like they, they are know it all, they are the authority. Um, and, you know, um, uh, uh, in that way, it's not... Uh, uh, possible to, to involve the student, engage the student into the learning process. Uh, however, um, um, in the globalizing perspectives, uh, we see teachers, we need teachers um, 
uh, uh, exploring, you know, um, we, we need to see teachers um, um, understanding themselves. Um, and um, Karen Johnson um, in her study explains this. Um, currently, teacher learning is about normative and lifelong uh, emerging out of and through experiences in social context. And time has changed. Uh, um, we, you know, the world is experiencing a very different um, period of time and we need to uh, be updated um, in terms of uh, the needs, the lacks uh, um, of uh, our students and ourselves. So uh, L2, teacher learning is socially negotiated, contingent on um, knowledge of self, students, subject matter, curricula, and setting. And um, L2 teachers as users and creators of legitimate uh, forms of knowledge who make decisions uh, about how best to teach their L2 students uh, within complex socially, culturally, and historically situated context. Um, okay, um, this understanding, I, I also need to talk about this. This uh, brings us to the understanding of teachers who are reflective practitioners, uh, because in the post-transmission perspective, um, the, the, the teachers play the role who deeply think about the principles, practices, and pro processes of classroom instruction. And this um, um, helps the teacher uh, bring some um, creativity, artistry, and context sensitivity to their task. Um, and more than that, even further, the, the post transmission perspective uh, anticipates teachers becoming transformative uh, uh, intellectuals. Um, just um, again, taking the responsibility for personal transformation for themselves and their learners. Uh, that's really very important. So um, teacher education needs to pay attention to broader historical, political, social, cultural and educational factors that um, impact teaching. And teachers, um, that brings us to understanding teaching, uh, teacher beliefs and as teaching is a complex activity, um, you know, teachers make hundreds of uh, decisions in the class and all of us as teachers make some instructional um, choices um, and we develop assumptions, you know, and beliefs um, and somehow um, um, learn, uh, I mean, during our career and um, we, um, uh, unless we uh, consciously uh, uh, reflect on them. Um, and beliefs influence how uh, we view the world and uh, decisions we make. And as Nesper suggests in, in uh, his study, uh, these beliefs play a major role in defining teaching tasks and organizing the knowledge and information related to the uh, tasks. So um, we get informed um, about what we need to improve in, in, in times of um, our uh, teaching. Um, so beliefs are important, you know, we teach because who we are. Um, and when we have a misbelief, this is reflected on our uh, teaching practice. And this is an important point to uh, consider. Again, Nesbor um, suggests beliefs are important influences on the base uh, individualized, conceptualized tasks and learn from experiences. Um, they are said to be formed by positive uh, and negative personal learning experiences as well as positive or negative opinions of others. 
So our encouragement um, or the encouragement we got, uh, we received or the support we received uh, from our um, um, lecturers at university or the support we give to our students is also very important in in, in here uh, because if if we um, uh, if we somehow make them gain some misbeliefs um, about themselves about their uh, um, capacity for learning and their skills or if if they get some you know being a role model if if we uh, give them the impression that it is the only way to teach something or be uh, a teacher like so um, these are important and our beliefs um, are shaped um, during our studenthood until we start uh, the teacher education uh, at our institution and still goes on in the classroom when we keep on uh, experiencing uh, our uh, teaching practice. Um, so beliefs about teaching, uh, when, when beliefs are articulated, um, uh, and reflected on, um, they, I mean, studies found that uh, they uh, uh, gain some greater awareness. Uh, so reflection uh, promotes, encourages um, change of beliefs. And Borg, for example, in, in both studies found that in many cases, in-service teachers, um, again, uh, his study is about um, increasing uh, the limited awareness of their uh, beliefs and um, through coursework, teaching practice and feedback and reflective writing, uh, uh, they uh, progressed uh, from the initial uh, stage of that limited, um, limited awareness, let's say. And um, they also strengthen, uh, strengthened their beliefs, extended and learn how to put their beliefs into practice and develop links between their beliefs and theory. Again, uh, some results from Borg's study. And one more thing uh, we need to mention, I need to mention here is teacher identity, uh, because reflection is recognized as a key means um, uh, by teachers, uh, I mean, by which teachers can become more in tune with their sense of self and with a deep understanding of how this self fits into a larger uh, context which involves others. Uh, so um, our identity is shaped um, somehow. Uh, reflection enables uh, teachers to look ahead uh, at the at it's their future practice or a future way of thinking that could inform uh, their teacher, uh, de their development as teachers. So uh, it's a powerful way, let's say, for teachers to delve deeply into their uh, teacher identities. Um, and their professional identity could be seen as some mm, as one that is constantly changing, evolving based on their personal and professional uh, experience. That's why I say articulating their beliefs and practices about teaching through reflection can be a powerful way to understand themselves in better terms of the school context they work in. Okay, and reflecting on role identity allows um, language educators to, um, as a useful lens um, into who of teaching, how teachers construct and reconstruct their views of their roles as teachers themselves about their peers and their context. Again, Fargis et al. study, 2005. So to understand language teaching, Learning, we need to understand teachers, the professional, the cultural, the political, and individual identities which they claim or they are, uh, which are assigned to to them. So, um, why should we reflect?
Okay, I, I gave an idea um, about, maybe you can mm, write in the chat somehow. You can talk at the, because I'm, I'm trying to kind of wrap. To become more of oh, my <laughs> MA student is there and um, self awareness to become a more mindful teacher, right? Right, right. Okay. Solutions for possible problems um, in class. Do we reflect? Should we reflect uh, only in, in the class? <coughs> no, right? It's about the uh, intent to, to increase the quality of our lives. Right, exactly. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, I want to uh, share some practical ideas. So reflection helps teachers to understand, um, I mean, we as teachers understand what we already know. This is something individual. Identify what we need to know in order to um, advance on, uh, our understanding of the subject. It's uh, something contextual. Make sense of new information and feedback in the context of our own experience. This is something relational. And I think this is the most important of all, guide choices for further learning that is uh, developmental. It's very related to our professional development as teachers. And there are barriers to reflection. Um, of, of course, practical ones, uh, as Paul sees. Um, we, we cannot spare some time to, to reflect. <laughs> uh, so we need to spare time to reflect and analyze. Um, it's uh, important. And psychological uh, barriers must, um, can be like fear of judgment, fear of criticism, um, you know, um, know it all kind of personality. I'm done. Um, I'm close to feedback um, or just defensiveness uh, or professional uh, arrogance. There might be some reasons uh, behind some psychological barriers uh, or uh, as that takes place as barriers for a reflection. Okay, so reflection it is important, we say, and it's because it enables us to be in be conscious of our uh, potential for bias and discrimination. Um, and we can use um, um, our, the, 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 the best, um, I mean, we can use knowledge in the best way possible. Um, and we can develop uh, our existing professional knowledge, uh, avoid our past mistakes, and maximize our own um, opportunities for learning when we uh, get aware of uh, uh, those uh, learning opportunities. And if we don't reflect, we will be unaware of how and then we are being discriminatory or we will make use of knowledge base uh, developed by our own pro profession. I mean, we will not be able to make use of, I mean, we, we won't be able to follow uh, what's going on in the field. We will continue to repeat the same mistakes and uh, we will uh, stagnate rather than develop. So it will not be possible. And another thing I, I, I want to highlight here is about critical analysis. As uh, you all know, it's analysis is um, you know, breaking a complex topic into smaller parts. And here, for example, um, an example from class like, would be exploring the reasons behind the student not understanding a, a concept. Um, he, uh, here, an analytical approach blah, 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 they might just say they were not ready to understand the concepts being taught and just cutting it over there. But a more critically uh, analytical approach might, might break down the issue you know, in, into different numbers uh, of factors. 
uh, for example, they this might be uh, about uh, students' previous learning or uh, understanding um, maybe the time of the day uh, was influential somehow the previous lesson or the the student's mood was uh, was not appropriate to. Uh, to understand the concept being taught or the way the teacher assessed the students understanding maybe um, there was um, some misuse of uh, assessment. Um, it was not based on uh, process. So um, I, I want to share some ideas. Um, and, I mean, just um, some of them, maybe um, some of you know, maybe some of you don't know. So in my humble um, um, repertoire uh, about doing things um, in uh, reflective practice classes, um, I want to share, for example, uh, Gibbs six-stage model uh, here. Uh, this is a good model because it's it's like, uh, it it is a, a framework um, because you know just saying reflect is not enough. Uh, reflection is descriptive. Uh, then the the the, the insights um, are not deep. Um, they 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 cannot um, go to a deeper level, and they cannot be uh, really helpful. So this kind of guiding. Um, um, questions um, can help help us uh, how for example um, uh, for the descript uh, description stage um, uh, in which you set the stage uh, for your reflection what happened you know when it occurred who was there uh, what did they do what what was the outcome um, kind of questions you can ask to yourself and these questions can guide you to to better reflect uh, and um, for example about your feelings um, discuss your feelings and thoughts about the experience how did you feel at the time you know you you, you felt that something was wrong during the teaching experience and you start questioning um, that feeling that um, situation that uh, dissatisfaction that unhappiness um, uh, and you 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 want to understand the reasons of it, then you need to reflect on your practice. And uh, these uh, questions can be uh, guiding for you uh, to write um, in your journals, or I will share some um, other tools. And um, again, uh, talking about Gibbs model, um, there are some um, questions about evaluation, like how did things go, what was good, what was bad, what went well, what didn't, what were the contributions, positive, negative. Uh, so many questions, you, you, you can choose them. Maybe you don't need, feel the need to reflect on all of them, but these questions can be guiding for uh, your tarot, uh, let me say, uh, reflections and benefit uh, from your reflective uh, practice. And um, analysis, uh, in, in this phase, you ask questions like, why did things uh, go well or badly? How can theory explain? So this also um, somehow get, uh, gets us to the point of searching. Um, from the literature, related literature, uh, and keep uh, keep following the trends, uh, keep updated with uh, the the recent developments in our fields um, to find possible solutions. And there are other questions because this is a rich <laughs> framework. A lot of questions, Hojam. Uh, uh, Allah'tan, um, I, I just shared one framework. There are other frameworks uh, works, um, uh, if they are interested. I mean, uh, teachers, our teachers uh, can search for more reflective frameworks because there are others. And um, questions um, gets us to the conclusion and some action plan. This is important. Why? Because... Uh, 
our reflection, our reflective process gets us to, to the point, to some understanding. And uh, now I have uh, gained some new knowledge and how can I use my new knowledge is um, just takes us to a point uh, to um, act upon uh, the things that we are not satisfied or with or improve or change somehow. Um, if the same thing happened again, what would I do differently kind of uh, actions uh, we can uh, plan? We can plan for actions. Another uh, way is talking to a critical friend. It, it promotes uh, reflection. Um, as again, this is suggested by Farrell. If you're interested, Farrell has huge literature on reflective practice, reflective teaching, and um, um, and he's teacher friendly. He calls himself, uh, I am a practitioner scholar, he says. Uh, so uh, he, he considers himself a teacher uh, and he, he he tries to narrow the gap between theory and practice, with, which is a recent uh, concern uh, for uh, academics. So you need to be open, listen actively, show empathy, um, judgmental attitude, as I uh, said earlier, uh, is, um, you know, is discouraging, is feels threatening um, and, um, um, that somehow blocks uh, reflection uh, on the part of uh, your mentee. And also you need to maybe plan the interaction pattern. Um, will that friend be only listening or asking questions? Is, is it going to be some kind of reciprocal activity? How much time um, uh, kind of questions can be designed? Um, earlier, um, you can use a journal um, uh, to record your um, reflections uh, and uh, collaborating with co colleagues, another uh, way of uh, promoting reflection in, in practice. Recording of video, audio, um, again, is a key tool we can say. Um, here using uh, reflective frames, I took this from Moon, uh, when writing reflective journals, um, as I uh, told in the previous slide, in moving from description to a more profound analysis is essential. So the reflection is a thinking process and we can't be tidy or follow a chronological order. So these reflective fra frames might be helpful uh, in guiding us uh, throughout our reflections, just like uh, Gibbs framework today, yesterday, last week, it made me think like uh, sentence frames uh, uh, help us. And regarding the videos uh, used as stimulus for reflection, you can self-record uh, your session plus uh, and choose a section, you know, you, you can just view it for emotional response and then choose a section. And these four questions, as Orlava suggested in, in her study, uh, can be guiding. Uh, what else? Reflective inquiry, um, you asking yourself questions to find best answer on your, actually this is all about reflective inquiry and um, doing some critical analysis of uh, your teaching uh, and our teaching, I should say, it provides us uh, uh, with a direct way to evaluate our mistakes and uh, fix them. Observation by peers, uh, it might be an important tool um, as peers observe what happens actually, uh, uh, this is something I like very much, especially during practicum. Um, um, our students in the same practicum classrooms can observe one another, take notes, as well as 
uh, recording themselves and you know watch those um, recordings afterwards. Hojam, um, and we have action research, um, uh, and it's a reflective tool. Uh, just a minute. Um, and teachers, um, it helps teachers to become researchers uh, inside the classroom itself. Um, the pattern is like plan, act, observe, reflect. It's, it's an important process in action research and it enables practitioners um, assess learning in teaching difficulties uh, and transaction, you know, uh, um, realizing issues of uh, transaction strategies and find immediate uh, solutions to the uh, problems faced in learner development. Another kind of uh, research um, my, um, just developed by my colleagues, uh, Richard Smith and Paula Roberdeva, we were together with Richard Smith um, for many years uh, for now. It's exploratory res uh, action research. And in that, what is different, uh, before we start to take action, uh, there is a planning for exploration. Um, and based on that kind of uh, analysis, uh, you, uh, in the second uh, phase, you plan for action. Uh, so uh, finally, I shall say, um, reflective practice uh, is, 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 is the best practice to uh, produce quality teachers with updated skills and knowledge encourages self-analysis, self-assessment, uh, makes the teachers uh, comfortable in their decisions, pays the way for exploration in the classroom. Uh, the classroom becomes a field of research and teacher becomes the researchers. Uh, the teachers become problem solvers. In their knowledge bases are enriched and their skills towards career development uh, improve, develop um, somehow. They have the op opportunity to increase their autonomy um, and think deeply about the principles uh, of uh, the processes of classroom um, in instruction. And the, as we uh, talked uh, in um, the, about the post-transmission perspective, uh, teachers can play uh, the role of transformative in intellectuals uh, who strive not only for academic advancement, but also uh, for personal transformation um, and um, somehow transformation to be to better help their learners. Hojam, uh, just five more minutes for uh, some, um, you know, um, ideas for uh, communities because um, communities um, are uh, nurturing environments uh, for teachers, uh, you know, teachers by exchanging um, ideas, um, their shares and concerns. Um, we have IATEFL. Um, I'm a member and I'm happy to uh, be a part of it. We also have TESOL um, and I'm part of uh, a session, uh, a workshop um, uh, which takes place um, in this village, uh, Electronic Village Online, which is free uh, and which is voluntary um, as part of um, TESOL uh, activities. and. The thing is, uh, the registration is now open. Um, I invite you, uh, I mean, uh, uh, to take part in this wonderful um, teacher development activities. Uh, Ojam, if I click, can you see? Uh, can you see the names of the sessions here? There are various sessions. Um, 
creating AI-generated activities, delivering best practices, grammar for TESOL. And we are there mentoring teacher research. Uh, we are a great team. Um, uh, I mean, we are a team. Uh, there's no just one lead person. Uh, the, 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 it's the, the best aspect of it. We uh, collaborate to, to prepare the content of our sessions. And we have hocam, uh, hocalarım, let me say, teacher research for de uh, professional development. Uh, there, uh, you can um, learn, um, have the chance to how to conduct teacher research um, within a community environment because uh, these um, two EBOs, um, mentoring teacher research and teacher research for pro professional uh, development are two sister EVOs. EVOs, we are part of the same community. Uh, we support, help, guide um, one another. So uh, you are more than welcome. Ali Hocam was, uh, I remember, was uh, part of the sessions. Um, okay, so now let me go back to the presentation. These are my references. Thank you very much for your patience. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy. Thank you. Sedan uh, thank you very much uh, for this very informative uh, presentation. Thank you. Um, if you do not uh, have anything to do with your presentation maybe you can stop sharing your yeah, yeah, yeah i can stop so that we can see each other better yeah, that's better. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, my dear colleagues if you have any remarks comments or any questions related to whatever sedan hocam has presented uh as well, Ali Hocam, I thought you were raising your hand, so I was going to show you as an example. <laughs> okay, so please raise your hand and uh, just turn on your mic and express yourself. If you do not have the necessary device to do that, you can write your own question in the chat box and I can read it. It's all up to you. I will give you some time to think and then ask your question, because I have a question. As usual, you know me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, okay, I'm distracted now because my daughters are saying goodbye to me. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, some goodbye, people claim that uh, in order to do reflective teaching or slash learning, you need to have a certain type of personality. Not everyone can do it. Because some people, Turan Ojam, I knew, I knew you were going to come up with a question. <laughs> but now I have the stage. Of some course, people you go on, are <laughs> so self-conceited they uh just cannot reflect they criticize others they love it they put the blame on other people but they never look at themselves and examine if there are any other possibilities for them do you agree that this reflective teaching requires a certain type of personality if so we know that we cannot change the personality of a person how can we inspire those who are closed to mm. reflection Actually, this is a very good question, Aydan Hocam. As a reflective practitioner, I keep asking this question to, to myself, to, to my loved ones, to my students. Uh, I think 
change should be possible. We 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 know that, um, and we see that it's a requirement. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but um, you know, we we talked about Kumarava Develo, um, not not much, but this power relationships um, mm -hmm. um, influence uh, the quality of life we 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 live, and um, Freire in his um, way of thinking um, the banking education like we need to uh, have a kind of dialogizing um, um, kind of relationships um, we need mm -hmm. to create some trusting environment this is not about your question I know uh, I'm, I'm on my way um, okay so okay. It, 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 it's not possible to change a person if um, but we can try. We we can at least try. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is about uh, emotional intelligence, and um, it's basically about the the, the self awareness of the teacher. So mm -hmm. each of us should be. I think this should be uh, also um, to taught in teacher education as 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 part of a course, and we are doing it. Um, social emotional but learning. But is it teachable? Hocam, it, it should be teachable. Otherwise, it, <laughs> it, it, it should be teachable. Otherwise, it's not possible. I mean, the world is changing. The schools are changing. The, the, the parents are not collaborating with the teachers anymore. The, the young um, people cannot, you know, um, stand still when their uh, teacher shouts at them, beats them. Um, I mean, the time has changed. And what are we going to do? I mean, it, we cannot keep our... I mean, I have never been like um, one in, in, in my teaching career. Uh, mm -hmm. We cannot keep that authority forever. Like, um, we are not um, circuits. <laughs> I mean, this, is, this shouldn't be part of our understanding. Like, we need more re role models. We need to mm -hmm. inspire our um, student teachers uh, to have dialogic relations um, mm -hmm. with with mm -hmm. with their um, students. Otherwise, it won't be possible to mm -hmm. to to collect <laughs> uh, yeah this broken pieces, the torn apart uh, uh, pieces of uh, education system and our yeah. uh, young generation. Right. I have, uh, I know a wonderful quotation. I want to uh, share it with you. It's very deep. So be ready for that. If nothing changes, nothing changes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Turan Ocham, it's your turn now. <laughs> Let's keep Please. hopeful, Hojam, I would say. Thank you so Please much. Please go ahead. Yeah. Well, uh, I always think about uh, the idea, where to begin and how to do it. I was the victim mm -hmm. of writing compositions, all my student education life, <laughs> from middle school to oh, yeah. uh, even uh, MA level. Mm -hmm. So no one told us how to write a paragraph, how to write uh you know structured composition mm -hmm. so i was just trying to you know find out myself like uh playing uh blind uh what's it blind fellow blind eye uh -huh. mm. you know <laughs> <laughs> i couldn't remember in english okay uh -huh. uh, uh, so how to begin so i ask my students okay i want you to reflect on this unit or I want you, especially when the students go to uh, teaching practice, I want you to write reflection sheet about your teaching. And they ask me, what shall I write? So that's why we should give them some kind of clues about what to mm -hmm. do. Then I, uh, I say, usually, you have a lesson plan, right? You have objectives. And in order to achieve your or attain your objectives, you have to organize some activities. And uh, also, in order to carry out your activities, you need some materials. So at least you have three things to reflect. I mean, to what at the end of the lesson, to what extent you think you have achieved your objectives or attained your objectives? Write down, okay, what you did and uh, what's your reaction at the end? 
So that is reflection on action. I mean, after the after teaching. Mm -hmm. Second, think about your activities. Did it work? Are you going to use them again next time if you are going to teach the same topic? What about your materials? Are you going to use them? Are were they useful, or did they really achieve help you to achieve your objectives? So these are there should be should be I mean asking some guided questions so that they can write something. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, especially uh, pre-service teachers don't know how to do it because in our education system uh, we don't have this habit of writing, especially writing reflections. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe orally they may say and also reflecting on uh, teachers uh, teaching or student teachers teaching especially in the teaching practice again we should give them this type of feedback and mm -hmm. uh, usually uh, people have a tendency to say I'm not bad Fena deal. I, I'm really angry about this word is it bad or not <laughs> please decide as a as a person who gives reflection or feedback. Yes, for example, so, if you're wishy washy enough, you cannot be wrong. Yeah. So if you say not bad, see, there's nothing yeah. to be wrong about. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I totally But agree be, with Tura no Cham. In, in detail, depending on their performance, it could be classroom mm -hmm. management, mm -hmm. it could be using materials, it could mm -hmm. be arrangement of activities, etc. So yeah, yeah. Uh, we should uh, give some kind of guidelines to the people, or it could be teachers as well, because they have never done reflection on themselves. Yeah, uh, we should give if we give guidelines, so we will they will learn how to reflect by themselves. Exactly. And some points. people say yes. I'm not good at writing. Then I say you can use video. I mean, now we have the technology; you can reflect orally. Uh, and then record yourself and listen to or watch yourself later. Mm -hmm. yes. Exactly. They don't have to thank write. You. They thank can you. just record their voices. To yeah. Yeah. Jam. Merto Jam thank has you. also been uh, raising yeah. his hand. Thank you. Merto Jam, yeah. please thank go you, ahead. Hello. Good evening, everyone. And thank you, Sedan Hojam, for your lovely presentation. My question is that uh, in the presentation, one of the ways we can reflect um, by taking help from our colleagues So how can we trust the other people in our workplace? And mm -hmm. there is another question. You know, if we are not enough for the situation and to reflect the situation or the things, and if there isn't anyone more knowledgeable than us, how can we cope with the situation? Hmm. <laughs> another mm -hmm. good question. It's, it's I felt stuck like dunk. Uh, <laughs> so with... I think it's a trust thing. Someone is a human need. Um, so um, maybe this can help us to to create an environment for um, um, trusting relationships. Like you, we might we need to start from somewhere. Uh, maybe we can't trust everyone, but. Um, I remember signing uh, a contract like this is an agreement, mentor mentee agreement, or like friends agreement. I promise not to uh, share, and everything will keep confidential uh, between us, like kind of um, contract. As teachers, we create materials, we adapt material. You know, uh, we need to find a way. This. Um, Trusting um, the round is needed um, um, to help us improve professionally. Uh, um. Merto Jam, there are several resources on the net. I strongly recommend our Inget Turkey YouTube channel. We have tons of videos there on how to carry out reflective teaching and how to carry out action research. As you can see uh, in those videos and many other resources you don't need someone to reflect you can start by yourself however you can stop start with a baby step so you can say first i will only reflect on my board usage mm -hmm. just reflect on one thing now what is reflection reflection is objective observation yeah. 
So you cannot say, for example, ooh, I was very good. I used <laughs> the board wonderfully. Nothing like that. So the behavior has to be explained. No exactly. adjectives. No adjectives at all. So I started from left at the very top. I wrote one sentence. See, this is reflection. So it's very much like broadcasting a live uh, sports event mm -hmm. without your impressions. Okay? Mm -hmm. If you. you start with baby steps, you will get better day by day. And then maybe with a friend whom you trust, mm -hmm. who you think will not judge you, but will help you. And this can be a two-way street. Okay. You know, Jam, I have seen your hand. Don't worry. I talk too much. I know I'm going to cut it short. After that, if you have a good supervisor, Seda Nojam refers to those people as mentors. Mm -hmm. You can also get their help. Okay? All right. But mm -hmm. you will get better and better. Believe me. Okay? Thank you. you. As you said, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, yes, uh, Seda Just a yes. little fantasy. Like, is self-monitoring is, is a strategy. You can monitor yourself, um, as I said, um, um, self-record yourself and what you're recording and ask some questions uh, mm -hmm. like why do I do this um, mm -hmm. is, is it beneficial uh, mm -hmm. shall I use it uh, I mean keep on doing it again uh, why why not I say for example when a student the teacher do, does something or says like good bad what makes you say that uh, I say mm -hmm. define that. What what does bad mean? Just tell me more about it. What mm -hmm. is what does good mean? Um, as Turan Ujam said, and as as you said, Ujam, uh, we need to guide them with some um, scaffolding, like some some questions, further mm -hmm. questions to help them dig under mm -hmm. what they mean and that that mm -hmm. that keeps on the surface level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Betul Ojam has a good remark in the chat box, uh, if you'd like to have a look at it. Uh, peer know. observation, video, audio recording, diary keeping, journal writing. Uh, mm -hmm. Betul Ojam, I don't know whether, you agree, whether you're going to agree with me or not. Turkish people do not like writing a lot. <laughs> However, I am a, a person who is for writing, because when you write... You also see, visually, face your ideas. However, audio journal is also a possibility. Mm -hmm. uh, Betul Ojam, do you uh, do any of these? Uh, I used to keep uh, reflective diaries, yes. Mm. <laughs> because I used to. I mean... Why? Because reflection is part of our um, life, as Sedeno just stated. No, so I, I'm asking why used to. I you used, you're not doing I mean, it now. I have been keeping diary in my personal ah, life. I and see. I find it um, mm. manageable um, and mm. efficient um, mm. to turn. As you see, you know, mm -hmm. uh, reflection uh, derives from Latin. Mm -hmm. Re, mm -hmm. I mean, turn, flexion. Um, mm -hmm. So you see, you know, um, you can revisit your ideas to make mm -hmm. a progress, to um, evaluate yourself. So mm -hmm. if you want to promote the fruitfulness of life, <laughs> it sounds philosophical, <laughs> maybe, uh, you need to make a progress. So mm -hmm. you need to uh, do your self-evaluation. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that um, keeping diaries in, in your personal life requires uh, 
much burnout. So mm. you can, I mean, regarding the question of uh, uh, Mr. Ozans, uh, I think he, he can, if his lack of the mentors or supervisors or teacher trainees, he can keep his um, reflective personal diet. diary. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Thank you very himself. much <laughs> for sharing your personal experience. He can also with us. make the. Yes, make make the self dialoguing, so he can dialogue mm. his self to mm. see to what extent he can make a progress. That's why I agree with uh, Sadanoja. Uh, yeah, yeah. I find uh, reflective maybe he diary. shouldn't do it for a long time because then he may need some psychiatric help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds just, therapeutic. Just joking. Just <laughs> it sounds joking, therapeutic. Of why not? <laughs> We are all human beings, yes. <laughs> of course, of yeah. course. Yeah, sure. Ümmü Hocam, are you cross with me? Because I kept you waiting. No, it doesn't matter. Just uh, because it's a little go bit ahead. topic, so I didn't want to interrupt you. Uh, Please I go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I don't jump, just ask a question about the relationship between the personality and the reflectivity, reflection uh, practices. I just want to ask the relationship between the culture and reflexivity. Mm -hmm. So do you think that it's a part of our culture, particularly for Turkish ones? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think, um, uh, I mean, from my personal point of view and my based on my experience um, in this field for 30 uh, years uh, this year, uh, I think we are not very used to reflecting on what we do uh, because this is about um, being hurt. Like uh, if if you are respected, if if your your voice uh, can be heard, uh, then you want to speak more and more because you know that you are heard. Uh, mm -hmm. So as some choice um, is not provided um, to many children during their childhood, they don't learn, unfortunately, to express themselves. Uh, I think this is uh, the, the, the main cause of it, uh, because do you want this? Why? Why not? Uh, mm. Kind of question. This, um, because they don't... Um, have to answer any why uh, questions, and uh, I know most of the most of the teachers are uh, stuck with uh, the new um, um, regulation. Something uh, form of uh, exams uh, mm. have been changed. Like uh, mm -hmm. students should be asked open-ended questions, and teachers. <laughs> uh, are trying to find ways to 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 get their students answer open ended questions because they, they because basically they can't uh, mm -hmm. they don't know how to answer open ended questions they they are used to answering uh, tests questions choosing among the uh, choices right so it's not their I fault we did that to fault, them Hojan. we did that yeah. to them poor exactly. guys I mean. I remember my own childhood. I was never explained why I was not allowed to do something. Mm -hmm. Turan Hocam, were you? When we were oh. little kids, our parents would say, no, you can't do that. And when <laughs> you say, why? They would say, because I say so. <laughs> Old parents were like that. But we never had any problems with answering open-ended questions. <laughs> So Why? Because in, in the classroom, we were yeah. asked to give our opinions in written yes. form or in the exams. Yes. It was yes. based on writing compositions, etc. Yes, not mm -hmm. uh, multiple choice tests. But who changed the education system to run a job? We did, not yeah. these young people. They became yes, victims of this. I'm sorry, I cannot find any politically correct word. This <laughs> stupid reform of education system. Not every reform is a reform, unfortunately. So and now we suffer 
We suffer mm -hmm. and we criticize them because they are not able to answer questions unless they are given any choices. A, mm -hmm. B, C, D, E. It's not their fault, right? Mm -hmm. By the way, in the chat box, Marwa Hocham comes up with a great idea. She says, uh, we can use AI tools to get feedback. Uh, she says she herself sometimes uses chat GPT or other chatbots uh, to get feedback. So we can also try that, right? Um, I do not see any other questions, but of course, people are thanking you for this wonderful uh, um, thank you, uh, session. Reflection, reflective teaching is not something that we can uh, cover in an hour. Yes, in, unfortunately. In, in, a, in a week or in a month. Yes. We can talk about it for uh, months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because what we want to do, in fact, is to uh, convince people, persuade them that mm -hmm. it's high time we started taking responsibility for our failure to teach. Mm -hmm. We keep saying, this new generation, oh my God, they can't learn anything. They have such short uh, concentration span. They lose their interest. They play with folk. Why? Why? Yes, so Let's question that. Why? It's not because... They love their phone more than they love you because their phones are more interesting I'm than sure. us. Right? So let's be honest. Yes. Right. Okay. Well, can I compete with the phone? I don't know, but at least I can try. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, yes, there are wonderful remarks here. Thanking you. And of course, as Inget, on behalf of Inget, oh, okay. I want to express my thanks, my gratitude, because maybe we couldn't finish it tonight, <laughs> but at least now we have a, a question to think about, yes. to sleep on, maybe continue discussing tomorrow. So Absolutely. you have started a wonderful thing. Thank you very much for that. Welcome. My pleasure, my honor, Hojam. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much for these beautiful comments um, and appreciations, uh, obviously. Um, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I know, Hojam, thank you very much for, again, being a wonderful support. Uh, you're always a, a, a wonderful person being here for us uh, and supporting our activities and events. And by the way, we have some new uh, teachers among us. I'm so proud to call them my colleagues. I have started to uh, work with them. For example, I can see Jan Berko Jam here, Dawuto uh, Jam here, Didemo Jam here, Ejemo Jam. If I miss your name, I'm sorry, I see Gite here. I see uh, Ushulo Jam is not new. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love you, Ushulo Jam, but, but you're not among them. Uh, I I have um, I have Roya Hojam here, Sanam Hojam. Uh, one, they are wonderful people, and I'm so lucky to work with them, to start working with them. And I know that we're going to do wonderful things together. Uh, sure. As usual, my dear colleagues, I wish you all the best. Please uh, stay safe, try to be happy, and continue learning. Never stop learning. Take good care of yourselves. Bye-bye, Bye. everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Hope to see you next week. Okay. Thank uh, you. I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Hojam. Çok Hocam, teşekkür very ediyorum. Nice to meet you. Okay. Yeah, very nice Good to meet you. Thanks, Aydın Hocam. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you so bye -bye. much. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.